Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Public Works Podcast. My name is Joseph Blackman. Today I got a real treat for you. Her name is Farah, Farah Alkerwe, and she is a water design integration senior project engineer for McCarthy, for McCarthy Building Companies. Farah, say what's up to everybody. Hi, everyone. All right, fair. So uh, the, the the title, I mean, I love these titles. They're so long. They're so vague. They don't even talk about like what you actually do or design or, you know, like, like come on. So give us what you actually do for work. And then also, um, and yeah, after that, we'll get into to the backstory. So tell us what you do for McCarthy. So as a design integration uh, professional, I basically work with a lot of entities like engineers, owners, and then within the organization itself internally. Um, I serve a lot of times as an interpreter between like the designer and the contractor. So we do a lot of reviews and all those stuff. And I use my technical skills and knowledge and combine it with the company. So like we have a lot of superintendents that have been in the field for longer than I've been alive. And they will have some great comments, and I just make sure that you know it sounds technical when I'm uh, put it in front of an engineer who speaks basically our engineering language, or per se, designers, and so on. Okay, okay, all right. So let's talk about your background. What was Farah doing at 12, 15, 18 years old? Was Farah into water design and engineering and all that stuff? And how did you get on that path? Well, um, so water wasn't the option uh, then. I have always wanted to become an engineer. Um, I grew up in a family full of engineers. I have nine uncles. My mom has nine brothers um, and seven of them are engineers. So I come from a family full of engineers. Um, they were more of like mechanical, the military and all of that, but and architects and all that. So I was really exposed to that aspect. I'm like, oh, I really want to get into that discipline. And then my dad, even though he's a teacher, he loved to build. He was very handy around the house and he always built. So I was always his little helper. I would mix concrete with him and like I'll finish the concrete and do these little things. And and that's that's me, you know, little baby growing up around the house, doing all these things. And where I'm from, uh, we build with bricks and cement uh, and more basically concrete, but like finer concrete. Um, so I was exposed to that. Um, and that's how I decided to become an engineer since then. Just been working toward it. Okay, okay. I hear an accent. Where are you from? So I was born in Baghdad, Iraq. I came to the U.S. Okay. as a teenager. Yeah. Okay, okay. How was the transition coming over as a teenager to, I mean, even when you're young, young, like, did you know you wanted to be an engineer? And what you thought would have been an engineer in Iraq, is that kind of consistent with what an engineer is in America? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes and no. I mean, I knew I was going to deal with some form of systems, uh, but I was more imagining like buildings and stuff. Um, growing up being an engineer, like designing a layout of a house and whatever. Um, so that's me as a baby. Uh, but the more and more I got into it and started, you know, just growing up, seeing the world, really understanding the world around me, I wanted something that's very impactful, meaningful. Uh, started to understand the environment and the importance of water, air quality, and all those things. So I was intrigued to that. However, I didn't really get into water, water until later in school. Um, I took some of my environmental classes that were required for my civil engineering degree. And I really loved like the process of how water is treated. So I worked at the lab during uh, my junior and senior year. Uh, I was a teacher assistant uh, or professor assistant. And then uh, from there, kind of my interest for water really peaked. Uh, but I wanted to be more of a builder, hands-on. So when I first graduated, I worked with a construction company and I was in the field. So I was doing high rises. I did a space lab. Um, so I did all kind of like mechan mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire life safety, startup commissioning, and then did structural. Um, so those were really fascinating, but I still wanted to like, I have that 
ache of like, I want to do a little bit more design. I want to do a little bit more water. And then I got lucky enough where my position opened up within my company because I didn't want to change companies. I really love McCarthy and the culture. I just wanted to do what I'm doing now. So I got really lucky and that's how I got into water. That's cool. That's cool. And you're also a, a intricate part of AZ Water. You want to talk about what well, we'll talk about AZ Water in a second, but why, you know, why join an association? What's Farah doing joining an AZ Water? Um, well, one is I love people. Okay. Like wherever I go, I want to know people. I want to talk to them. I want to find out more. If there's something that I can do, I'll go ahead and do it. That's, that's not a question. Right. Um, but really, uh, my very first week in water, I was signed up for the AZ Water Conference. It just happened to be my very first week. So I'm starting here. I remember coming into the office from the field, last week in the field. This week, I'm in the office, this position. And then Monday, I'm in the office. Tuesday, I'm at the conference. I go into the conference. I, you know, I, I know water basics from school. Um, that's really what it is. And I like the treatment, like very, very technical side, but I didn't know anyone. I didn't know any company names, like literally nothing about water. Uh, so that's that's how I was exposed to AZ Water in the beginning. And then I started hearing about uh, AZ Water. Actually, the YP committee is one of the things that the company signs us up for. So when you join the water group within McCarthy, uh, all the young professionals, they're strongly encouraged to sign up for uh, AZ Water YP committee, which I did. I attended the first meeting, met amazing people, and I stuck with it. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be here every meeting. And uh, that's how I got involved. So now I'm involved with the AZ Water YP committee and the Wastewater Treatment Committee and a couple other organizations. But yeah, that's how I cool, got into it. Cool. Yeah, associations. I mean, I, I can't stress them enough for younger people, even, I mean, not even if you're young, just if you're new to the industry, like the amount of energy and like inspiration you get from just going to a conference like that. It's like, I love pickup basketball. And when I see, even from driving past a park and I see some guys out there playing, like I feel happy. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, they're doing what, like, it's cool. So like I can, I mean, I always stress like, man, if you're, if you're feeling down or if you feel like you have no purpose in your industry, or in your niche, find a conference to go to, you know, pay the, pay the money, go sit in there, walk around, talk to the vendors, listen to a couple of talks and, and you'll, you'll be invigorated. You'll kind of get that, that spark back, which is, you know, pretty cool. Um, and how long have you been a part of AZ water? Like when was that conference? So AZ water last year was in April. Of okay. Okay. That was your first one. Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, it's it's a uh, good I like AZ Water. Good times there. So we're we're talking about your position today. Um did you know like kind of what it was going to be about before you got into it? Mm, not really. Uh, to okay. be completely honest, <laughs> like I I knew I was going to be working more with technical things, which I do. Um my direct boss. She's a, a chemical engineer. She comes from like a wastewater treatment uh, background from like consulting. Uh, so a lot of years there, a lot of knowledge there. So I knew I was going to get some of that exposure and which is what yeah. I was looking for. Uh, but all the things that I do and the amount of fun I have at work and the amount of the great people that I meet at work, I did not expect it to be like this, honestly. So yes. I, it's way more. And, and the follow-up question to that is, let's say you had to mentor somebody younger who's like, hey, I'm going to have this position at like a different firm or even the same firm, but just the same position. What skill set would you tell them to be good at to actually be successful at what you're doing today? Like, what would you say? Just hone in on this one thing, get really good at this, and you'll be fine. What would that thing be? It's communications. Um, okay. As I mentioned earlier, we serve as interpreters in many different ways. And there are so many great ideas that come out. And if we don't put it in the right terms, in the correct terms, we might not deliver that right idea to our partners, our external, external partners in the industry. So if you're able to communicate and be able to just you know, ask the right questions at the right time, and don't be afraid from saying, I don't know, uh, sometimes and get people to explain things to you, uh, that's, you know, that's, that's really like the, 
you know, the main focus of my role is I communicate things between groups, between different people and so on. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. I need a story from Farah of when something that went wrong under your watch, what you did to fix it, and then what lessons you learned from that to apply to your future career. Yeah. So um, a lesson learned um, under my watch. So when I first started as a very bright new engineer, just got out of school, um, I had zero engineering and construction experience did not do any internships. And I had like a lot of, I've, I've worked all my life, I've like business and all of that background, but uh, coming into a project where a subcontractor was really struggling and they had a lot of uh, management changes. So their managers have changed a few times and it just happened to be for them to have another manager for their group change at the same time I've started. So it was really, uh, a tough time for that subcontractor and they were a huge part of that project. So they were one of the larger subcontractors. And I took that as an opportunity for myself, instead of being new and staying in my shell and like not going out and not talking to anyone, I actually, I made them my best friends. They're the ones I'm going to every single day. Even if I didn't have anything to say to them, I'll go into their trailer and ask them questions. We will explore the systems together. So we'll talk about things. I'll have them teach me all about the, the systems that we're working on, teach me about the equipment that we're working on and give me a little background and all of that. And instead of having to deal with this and they're new and they're still trying to figure it out and they're struggling and I'm new and I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm not gonna go and be like, you need to do this. And I really don't know as much. I don't have that background uh, to support it. I just worked along their side and I got an amazing relationship, professional relationship out of that. Actually, I'm still in touch with some of them right now. And like they, do, they would just say hi to me and years later, um, just, you know, random text or a LinkedIn message and like, hey, how are you doing and all this. So that really was a lesson learned for me is um, when there's a conflict with people and all this, all you need to do is just open that door, make it easy for them to come to you and talk to you and just, you know, let them know that you, you're you in, in their shoes or if you're trying to help them out, go ahead and help them out. Just don't let things be an obstacle in your way of doing that. That really worked out well yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, I like it. What's Ferris personal and professional development regimen like? Like, how do you keep showing up better and better? Like, you got in the water industry relatively, you know, you're you're new. I mean, you know, five years is probably mm -hmm. new. Uh, one year is for sure new. But um, how do you keep accelerating your learning curve? How do you keep your sword sharp? Yeah, sure. So other than being uh, super involved and saying yes to opportunities, I really always look back on my monthly performances. So uh, I I do way too many things for one person. Um, obviously, I focus on my full-time job right here at McCarthy, but I do have a lot of other things that I also manage. And I've learned this skill early enough in my life where every month I look back at my performance. How did I do? What are some of the things I really struggled with? Uh, how can I improve it? And I have adapted where I always look forward to improve things versus having to look back and be like, oh man, I should have done this. Or no, I didn't do that. So always look for the future and look for better ways. Like even when I was in school, I was always like this too. Like I would always watch tech talks or read articles on how to become a better student, how to study more efficiently and like more proven techniques to improve myself. So that continuous improvement. Um, as a matter of fact, one of my very favorite things about McCarthy and working here is we have some mandatory trainings that we go through throughout the year, just pure development. And it's soft skills, building our teams, as well as technical subjects and uh, trainings that we get from different groups across the company that really provide that knowledge. And that helps tremendously to just improve, grow within the industry, within the company. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how I continue to improve and grow in my career. And that's, sure. that's something I've looked at in AZ Water too. Like, how do I grow, become more involved and take on some subcommittees, become the chair of that and get more involved and build more relationships. And that's how I do it. Sure, sure. When when Farah's not doing like water at McCarthy or AZ Water, 
Like, how do you, de how do you decompress? You got a lot going on. You got a lot in your plate. How do you kind of mindfully step away from it all and, and do some, like, what are your hobbies outside of like work? <laughs> um, so I am very close to my family. I have nieces and nephews and uh, we come from the Middle East and we all live really close to each other. So every weekend, like my family get together and we love to laugh loud. We eat a lot. Um, I also like to be in the nature. Uh, we, we just go to like a lake or go on a hike and just be outdoor and enjoy, you know, enjoy the environment. Sure, sure. Let's say we ask one of your aunts uh, or, or your sisters, like, what does Farah do for work? Like, what would they get totally wrong? Like, what's some of the biggest misconceptions about your position? <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you ask my sister or any of my family, they will know exactly what I do because I don't stop talking about treatment plans. And when I, I'm like, you know where I was this morning? I literally saw all of Phoenix's poop. Like, I'm like all over. Like I'm, I'm at this wastewater treatment plant. It smelled. We're doing this project. So I talk about work all the time. They're probably tired of hearing about it. However, like to just if you would ask anyone um, about, you know, when I actually when I tell anyone about my, uh, I am an engineer. They immediately think. I deal with buildings like i i build buildings or i make buildings look pretty and all of that um so people don't think about all the other stuff that engineers do um and when i start telling them about what i do with water how water is treated those systems the technologies that are out there and all of that people are fascinated especially that they don't think about um the you know like what, what, what's behind the wall behind that faucet like they, they don't think about all of that and how that works and the amount of work that gets put into it so that's that's one of the misconception about an engineer or like when i tell people what i do um they sure. they find it very amazing and surprising cool cool let's say all the listeners you know all 10 million of us we're listening to this podcast and we just want to help farah farah seems cool we just want to help her out but like, what should we listen for when we're out in the public of a problem that Farrakh and McCarthy can solve? Like, what would that be? So within my position, especially at McCarthy, we focus a lot on collaborative delivery methods. So we work, uh, well, we do, we're a major general contractor. We focus on complex projects. So as I said, like I come from, you know, building a space lab so like that's one of our specialties we do healthcare higher education uh, health, uh we do uh industrial work in other parts of the world and sorry other parts of the country uh so we operate out of the whole united states we have five regions within the u.s um and water wastewater is a national business for mccarthy so we operate out of all of our regions for the water groups so i work with teams all over the u.s we have projects in Midwest, we have projects here, we have projects in Southern, all of that. Um, we also do renewable energies. So we do a lot of solar work as well. Uh, within the water group specifically, which I've been pretty involved with, uh, we focus on uh, being there early to have that contractor input, that experience that comes from the field, that, you know, a superintendent, that doesn't get involved in any of the design or the calculation or the planning meetings, but goes out there and been building it for so many years. When they come out and review a 30% set plan. So when you have, you know, set of plans that just barely been developed with some calculations or even like a basis of design. Um, so just like an initial design and they review and they have their input into there. That is very beneficial to both the clients and the engineers, we focus a lot on improving our overall experience within the industry. So when we do a project, we focus on that positive experience, that high quality end product, uh, because at the end of the day, most of our clients are repeat clients. They were not going and trying to recruit more clients every day. We're working with the same client on this project. And then within a few years when that project is over, we actually work on doing the next project. So we want to be able to deliver the maximum efficiency of that project with the budget that's been assigned to it and eliminate 
the redesign work our engineers have to do, the amount of RFIs in the field, and so on. So we're really focused on improving the process early on. Okay, let's say, let's say you know you had to leave the country and go back to I Iran, right? Iraq. Is it Iraq? Sorry, Iraq. Um, and you had to be a water design engineer. What I guess what what gift skills or talents could you apply to back home? Like, what would you where would you start? <laughs> so, well, one my technical skills, so my knowledge of what's out there for water treatment. Um, so, as I said, I worked with my uh, my immediate boss. She's a chemical engineer, and all she talks about is how we treat wastewater, how we spoil those bugs and make sure they're treated pretty well so they bring all the bad stuff in the water and we're cleaning that wastewater but also my other director um she's actually a membrane expert for 17 plus experience globally so it's not just from the us she's she comes from a global uh water treatment technologies and all that so i have that knowledge that knowledge of either direction I want to go, I have some knowledge in there, right? Uh, as well as I can identify the needed personnel on that project to make it happen. So what kind of experience do we need? Uh, you know, what, 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 what how to identify the problem, how to come up with solutions and those analysis and um, setting up a schedule. I mean, there's so many things I can go into the details here, but really uh, with, within my position, I work from all the way before like pursuits, we know like what projects we would like to work on pursuits to um, uh, designing the design phase and then going through that design phase and then construction um, how we transition our design to construction phase, to that team, and ensuring that transition is successful, also staying in the loop with that construction or the field team. And then lastly, we'll also focus on startup and commissioning, and then even a little bit on operation, how we can improve that process. So I feel like wow. I've gotten a good exposure to really yeah. have an overall <laughs> project. Yeah. Where I needed to. And, you know, that's, that's so cool because, I mean, we all work, I mean, we're working in our jobs every day, all day, right? But I always think like what actual like tangible gift skills or talents could we apply? Like, let's say there's a, a world reset or something and everybody goes back to the stone age. Like how could Farah and Joseph like put our brains together to make that world a better place? You get what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, yeah. it's kind of dystopian and futuristic thinking, but I think we, we develop these gifts and skills and they actually can help people out who need it and, and I, you know, I just like playing that game. Actually, in, in regards to the future, what do you think the person sitting in your seat will be solving 50, maybe 100 years from now? What will it look like then? Um, like in the future, so one, I know staffing has been a huge uh, problem within our industry. Um, and the reason being, it's because I have seen a lot of young folks don't even know that water is an industry that people can go and be professionals at. Uh, so I, I see that, you know, there is more involvement, more opportunities for younger folks to be involved in training uh, upcoming people, happening, uh, happening to be at schools, like even, you know, elementary, middle schools, high schools, letting students know like, hey, water, you know, you can be an engineer, you can be an operator. I mean, you, you can be so many things and work in water. So I see more education happening. I already see some of it happening now. I see so more, much more of that actually taking place and it being uh, very much more important to take place at an earlier stage of, uh, you know, a young individual who is still trying to see like what's out there in the world to do. Um, so really someone in my in my position or within the industry uh, at my level will be focusing on passing on that, you know, that knowledge on to younger folks to get them into the industry. That's one of the things that the future will, I'm sure will bring. Sure. Sure. Let's say Farah is commissioned to put up a billboard, and this billboard is in the most trafficked area of, let's say, Phoenix. Uh, what ask of your community in regards to 
water design or water in general would you put on this billboard? So on a billboard, that's an interesting question, Joe. Um, I would probably put either like how much an operator makes. <laughs> Come join us, you know, like those, those, okay. uh, those, uh, like the, I, I don't know if like they're police recruiting, like, oh, the bonus. Yeah, they, bonus they do the salary kind of range thing. on there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just to get more <laughs> operators, more folks into the industry. Really? Come on, join us. We need you. Yeah, sure, sure. I like it. All right, Farah, I always like to leave a space on the show for you to thank mentors that you had along your journey and then also offer a word of inspiration and motivation to your countrywide industry engineer counterparts. Yeah, so there are many mentors um, that have led me to where I am today and are still working with me today. So definitely would like to thank Mikhail Ramkowski uh, and Naomi Jones. They've been a great part of my growth and building my knowledge in the water industry, as well as uh, some of my YP uh, colleagues like Katie Stowers, Danielle Pamphil, Sarah Hubbard. Those are uh, great people that made me feel welcomed and made me want to do more and be out there, uh, as well as Frederick Tack. Um, and as a special thank you to my mentor from my uh, early college years, uh, Ernest Felicana, and he's been a mentor since then and still guiding me through. Uh, those are all people I would love to thank and uh, they have contributed a huge amount toward my success sure sure all right well fair thank you for hopping on the podcast uh to all the listeners out there make sure you share this with somebody who you think needs to hear it uh fair before we get out of here any final words for our listeners um i'd just like to say thank you for listening and i look forward to uh, seeing more and more people on your podcast and then listening to some of the podcasts that you have and you have some amazing guests and really looking forward to uh, seeing what you have uh, for us in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Farah, again, thanks for hopping on. This has been the Public Works Podcast and thank you for tuning in.